Well, joining me now is Professor Alan Boyd, who is president of the RCP's Faculty of Pharmaceutical Medicine, and also we have Dr. Adrian Wolfson, who is from Pfizer. Well, welcome to both of you. You're welcome. Now, we're talking about how the NHS can afford new drugs. What have you got to say about that? Yes, drugs are expensive, definitely. But I think for the future, we have to think about how we can change that and get the NHS more involved. So at the moment, anything that's identified and sort of discovered with the NHS doesn't actually, is, is soon sold out. What I think we need to think about is, could the NHS actually take those first initial steps in a drug development process and increase the knowledge? And then, because that value will go up, they can then sell out and clearly that would bring more money back to the NHS and feed the system. Well, do you think that they could do that? They could invest in developing new drugs. Do they have the capacity to do that? Do you think that? I think the NHS has got an incredible uh, amount of talent and resources which are being underutilised, and that's both the minds of the individuals who are actually working in the NHS, but also the infrastructure for managing patients to perform clinical trials, uh, and then the anonymized data um, which they have and, and all of those resources could be used to leverage their position uh, within the healthcare sector to help them to generate revenues and to form the basis of uh, interactions with the pharmaceutical industry and the uh, uh, biotechs and, and so on. And this is slightly uh, uncharted uh, waters, isn't it? Because there isn't really a country that's, that's doing this well, do you think? No, nope. um, it's not done at all. I mean, clearly we use uh, you know, hospitals and patients to do clinical studies, but it's not done on, on this basis. I mean, we've got a population of 65 million here, all captured within the NHS, and that doesn't happen anywhere else in the world. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I think we can do more with the NHS right. to bring, you know, new medicines. And also, we're talking about using philanthropists, using NGOs, using other partners. So what do you see as the future there, Adrian? I think that we've got a fundamental issue, which is that you know, in 50 years time, we can expect to see functional cures for a great many common diseases of global significance. And we really need to think ahead to the future and say, what can we do today uh, to prepare for that? And I think the NHS has really not changed its paradigm of operation since its inception in 1948 and really it's probably time to rethink how uh, various things are funded and to see whether the more innovative ways of engaging uh, some of the external partners like the pharmaceutical industry and the biotechs and other agencies and to see whether you can sit down at a table and actually come up with a new structure that's mutually beneficial, preserves the independence and intellectual freedom of scientists within EHS, but also helps them to take new medicines forward into the clinic faster and more efficiently and to get some of the upside of that. Are there any particular disease areas that you're thinking are ripe for this? I'm thinking, say with Zika or Ebola, there are several pharmaceutical companies working together and NGOs to collect the yes. data. Yes. So are you thinking of any disease areas? Probably things like oncology. Will be, will be vital because you know th there's a lot of cancer patients around. Um, you know, a lot of the cancers we haven't got these functional cures for yet. And so, you know, working closer together, um, we can do that. In fact, as part of it, you know, getting a cancer patient into a clinical study actually saves the NHS money because they're not you know, having you know, the cost of the, of the therapies, but actually um, they're, they're actually contributing to the future research and, and are getting treated though at the same time and hopefully getting benefit. And, and I think, you know, in, in principle, Alan's right that it makes sense to begin in one disease area, but hopefully this type of approach should be disease area agnostic so that once you've, in a sense, established the, the beachhead with, say, oncology, you can then broaden out this model to other disease areas and hopefully eventually encompass all disease areas and, and transform the, the model uh, which the NHS used to operate by. So basically it becomes a template to then roll out across yeah. the... Right. Well, Alan and Adrian, good luck with that and thank you very much. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you very much.